Hello everyone, I'm Gareth from Master974 back again today doing yet another Valve source code tutorial. Now I know in the previous episode, episode 0, I said that I wouldn't go over what you need to do to be able to debug your code. The only thing I gave as advice for that would be to make sure that you have stuff in your mod episodic or mod hl2 folder in your actual project to make sure that when you go through the process of debugging uh, following the steps that I'm about to tell you then it, the game doesn't crash. So I said all of the steps necessarily in the first episode zero, so that's the first episode, and that's how to get the source code and how to get into a position to compile it. Now I'm going to quickly go over how to get into a position to debug the code and then I'm going to actually get into what I would want to do for tutorial one. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you boot up into your games solution, which is has all your clients and server stuff in it. And it's not the everything because that's going down the route of custom applications and that like, like VBSP, VRAD and all that. So games project solution. And you want to make sure that you're in the debug configuration, which you should be in already. If it's release, then change it to debug because you'll get more useful information via using the debug solution. Um, and so what you want to do is either select your client or your server project. So if you're doing the Half-Life 2 code, then either select the client HL2 or server HL2. And if you're using the episodic code, then choose client episodic or server episodic. It doesn't matter which one you use, but right click it and go into the properties. And you want to look for down the left hand side for where it says debugging. It should be crystal clear. And so there's three things here that we're going to want to change the command, the command arguments and the working directory. And this is relatively straightforward to do. Um, so for instance, in command, what we want to do is point towards the hl2.exe executable file inside our source SDK base 2013 folder, and that's the game install. So it would usually be under Steam, Steam apps, common, in my case it's source SDK base 2013 single player, and then you want to select the hl2.exe from there. So that is what the command is. It's saying load up this executable file. And under the arguments, we want to have something along the lines of uh, dash allow debug, dash dev, dash sw, dash con debug, dash console, dash to console, dash game, then in speech marks, we want to have a link to our actual mod HL2 or mod episodic folder inside our game folder, which will be under our SP or MP folder from the actual, you know, sort the actual overarching folder that has both the single player and multiplayer versions of the source code when we downloaded it in episode zero. So you want to point to there specifically. And after, after the speech marks outside of them, you want to do plus map and then name a map that you're going to boot into. So in my case, I boot into Airx underscore start from my Air Exchange retail mod project because I know that map exists. You can go into any map that you would have in your maps folder because I told you make sure that your mod HL2 or mod, epi mod episodic folder is filled with content. So you can pick a map that's in the maps folder from there. And um, that should be that. So it allows us to debug, allows us to start windowed so it's not full screen, gain access to the console and load a map up as soon as the uh, game's going to boot up. And under the working directory, you can simply just copy and paste the top line and just get rid of the hl2.exe bit because all that is doing is pointing towards the source SDK base folder. Um, and so with that, you should apply, okay it up, save it, and it should put you in a position to debug the code. 
Now, it will give you an error or something saying that there's no symbols to load hl2.exe or something. Uh, you can just, you know, say no to that because we don't have access to that code to debug the exe file, essentially. So that is one you can ignore. And then every time you, you know, click on the little play button and debug the actual code, then it should load up hl2.exe from source SDK base 2013, either single player or multiplayer, load straight up into a map and then it's going to be using your custom code so you can test to make sure that your weapons are working, that your items are working and stuff like that. So that would be how you debug, it's very quick, very simple and of course the final step in the tutorial I'm looking at is one I've told you at least multiple times make sure that your mod hr2 or mod episodic game folders in your game folder directory under your source code actually is populated with stuff and specifically it mentions um shaders to get rid of a white screen bug um resources um hr2 stuff a platform to get rid of a pink console and expressions for npc usage and stuff like that Again, you can go into something like the Source SDK base folder and there should be VPKs in there. And as long as you have something like GCF scape, you should be able to access them and extract them to your mod HL2 mod episodic folder and get all the content that you need in essence. So now I'm going to move on to the first tutorial, which is going to be about outputting messages to the console. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to output messages to the console in-game. Now, there are three methods that I'm going to show you about displaying messages in the console. One of which is standard MSG for message. And in rounded brackets, you put in a const char star and the name of something that is um, a string in essence and then that is white, you can use warning and in, used in the same way, or you can use dev msg and that's for a dev message. So msg is white, warning is red and dev message only displays if you're using developer mode. Now developer itself has multiple tiers to it, so if you basically go developer um, and then a number and the number tells you what uh, you know what, what your access you have so for instance um, developer zero means that you don't have developer mode on uh, number one gives you standard debugging information uh, number two gives you more debugging information and you get messages in the top left of the screen and so on and so on and I'm sure there's a way that you can hide certain messages in uh, debugging mode so with dev message and you can specify what developer level you need to have to see it but that's beyond this all I'm doing here is pointing out that developer messages only show up when you have developer mode on so in this case what I'm going to demonstrate is Simply enough, the submachine gun from Half-Life 2, and I'm going to define a const star chart star called text, and essentially, as soon as the submachine gun is going to be constructed, so to speak, it's going to be a string that is it says the word null, um, but in the secondary attack what we're going to do is change the name of it to fire the cannon because, you know, firing a grenade launcher. And you can use message, warning or dev message and in quotation marks you can type in percent %s to refer to the fact that you're going to be pointing to a string and then outside of the speech marks you put comma and in, in this case text and you also probably want to use backslash n at the end inside of the speech marks to denote the fact that the next console message is going to be on the next line down 
if you don't do that, then you'll have all messages playing back to back and side to side, and it doesn't look too good if you ask me. So in this case, fairly straightforward. You just have a string that is in speech marks and you refer to it in message, dev message or warning with percent %s. And um, a more complicated example is, for instance, including stuff like integers and floating point variables. So integers, you call on them by using percent %i and floats, you call on them by using percent %f. Now, in my case, I use percent point two f to mean that when it's displayed in the console, it only goes to two decimal places. Now, you can go to point three f, point four f to go to um, you know more and more decimal places. So that's how you would use integers and floats as well. And in this case, you would have to say, okay, um, percent s is first, so that's the string. It says fire the cannon. Then using percent i shells so i is an integer number so after outside the speech marks the first thing you put in is text then after that you put in i because that's what i called the integer to call on using percent i and then at percent 0.2 f feet per second is calling on a float which i've called f so it would be in my case here message something in speech marks comma text to go to percent s i which is an int to go to percent i and f to go to percent point two f and that's how you do it so any strings you use percent s to refer to them any integers you use percent i and any floats you use percent f or percent point something f so that is pretty much how you do it and an example i give as well is using hashtag if def now, you can use stuff like ifdef hl2 dll or client dll or in this case underscore debug underscore release and even use stuff like if ifndef. So if it's not defined as a certain thing, then it tells you whether or not to execute the code or not. So if you have a piece of code that you only want to run in the debug setting for the debug project but not the release, then you can put this bit of code in an hashtag if def of underscore debug. So when you go to say the release version, then that bit of code isn't going to be executed, but in the debug mode it will. And so that is another way of basically hiding bits of text and um, bits of code rather um, behind the debug project. So you have to be in the debug project to get certain you know code to fire properly in essence so that would be how to output text to the console i know i haven't covered how to do booleans but it should be fairly straightforward um but even with that guys i'm going to be rounding off this video here i hope you found this helpful or enjoyable or whatever um this is the first tutorial that i wanted to do getting into the source code I have an idea, a very cool idea for the next uh, Valve source code tutorial. So I hope you uh, will check that out because it's something that I have been wondering how to do for a long time now. So with that, guys, thank you very much for watching. Peace out. Take care. See you later.